California's education system is big and complex, and it relies deeply on volunteers. Every school community needs people who step up to get involved. Thank you for what you do. My name is Jeff Camp. I'm the founder of ed100.org, which I started writing more than a decade ago. Amazing. Our mission is to help school communities develop well-informed leaders and volunteers who understand the system so they can make a difference for kids. You can think of Ed 100 as a free crash course that summarizes the education system in 10 chapters. Education is students and teachers spending time in places for learning with the right stuff in a system with resources for success. So now what? Each lesson on Ed 100 takes about five minutes or so to read in English or Spanish, and each includes a brief one-question quiz to reinforce a main point. As you pass each quiz, you earn your way toward your certificate as an Ed 100 graduate. This video is a brief overview of Chapter 1. I hope it inspires you to sign up with Ed 100 and learn more. Lesson 1.1 starts with some big picture context. School is a big phase of life for everyone, and public education is one of the biggest functions of government. As a percent of the economy, it's roughly equivalent to national defense. In California, about one out of every six people is a student in K-12. There are about half a million students per grade level in this state, about six million in all. California is America's most populous state, and for decades, the story of this state was growth, growth, growth. The system's enormous, but it has to be personal at the same time. It has to work for each student with all kinds of different needs. Unfortunately, it doesn't. There's strong evidence that California's students are behind. The official measuring stick for education systems in America is the nation's report card. Insiders call it the NAEP. A small sample of 4th and 8th graders take the NAEP exams, which test if they can understand written material and solve questions using math. In general, students that are Asian tend to score highest, followed by white students. Students that are black or Latino tend to score lower. Students from higher income families score higher than those from lower income backgrounds. Compared to other states, California has a high proportion of students from segments that tend to score low. During the pandemic, a lot of kids missed a lot of school, and the test scores dropped everywhere, including California. Over time, compared to other states, California's scores have been low across a lot of definable segments, including black, white, Latino, and low income. Uh, okay, so how do America's students compare to the rest of the world? That's the subject of Ed 100 Lesson 1.2. Governments worldwide invest in free public education partly because over time it pays back. All over the world, countries have been improving their schools from preschool through college. Two international tests, PISA and TIMS, compare education results around the world. America's scores are on the low side. Now, America used to have the biggest and best college systems on the planet, attracting talent from all over the world. That's less clear-cut today. College systems in other countries have become excellent too, and at far lower cost. There are far more students in China, for example, than there are in America. Global investment in public education partly reflects a change in the economy. In 1975, the total value of the U.S. economy was mostly defined by the value of tangible assets, like coal or trucks. But today, most of the value of the economy is made up of intangible stuff like brands or software or know-how. This inversion contributed to a massive concentration of wealth and made education increasingly important. In a knowledge economy, you need knowledge and skills. School systems help people acquire knowledge and skills on purpose, at scale, and in a way that employers know how to value. Students don't tend to drop out of school as an active choice. Stuff happens and they just stop coming. The students that drop out are not random. Disproportionately, they are African American and Latino and living in poverty. This is bad news in all kinds of ways. Some of the kids that drop out, especially boys, end up breaking laws, causing harm, and going to jail. A year of prison in California 
costs the public about seven times as much as a year of school. When kids don't get the education they need, everyone loses. The education system depends on parents to serve as guides and advocates for their kids. Unfortunately, parents often have no idea when their kid is off track. The vast majority of parents believe that their kids are on track to graduate from high school and go on to a four-year college. In reality, most do finish high school, but only about 30% of students earn a bachelor's degree, and that's an average. For groups of students that face challenges along the way, the rates are considerably lower. Teachers, parents, and students all really want to believe that their education is on track, even when it isn't. Standardized tests are unpopular, but they're essential precisely because they are impersonal. A low score should be viewed as a call to action. Public education faces a lot of criticism, especially in developed economies like America, where it's easy to take schools for granted. In the pandemic, test scores dipped, triggering a wave of pessimism. It's important to know that over the long term, public education has been a huge success story, measured in almost any way that matters. Graduation rates have improved, college going rates have uh, risen, especially for women. Disciplinary cases like expulsions and suspensions have become more rare. Test results have gone up in the aggregate over the long haul for every definable group, even though achievement gaps are frustratingly stubborn. The major long-term indicators point to reasons for confidence. In America, the rule that all kids have to go to school is barely 100 years old. How did that happen? Lesson 1.7 reviews the major milestones in the history of education change from Horace Mann to Sputnik to Title IX and the universal use of online learning in the pandemic. It's one of the most read lessons on Ed 100. Throughout the history of public education, the purpose of the system has shifted and expanded. As Lesson 1.8 explains, we expect a lot more from public education today than we did in the past. Simplifying a lot, the system has to prepare each student for their individual future in a way that continuously renews a civic society that can work for all of us, which is a pretty big job. Well, that's it for Ed 100 Chapter 1. Visit ed100.org to learn more and take the quizzes to work your, toward your Ed 100 certificate. Chapter 2 will delve into the facts and challenges of California's diverse student body as well as the critical role of parents. If this post helped you, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and help others learn about it. Thank you.